Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we're going to quickly be showing the Bezier tool to trace a physical object, an object in like an actual real picture, and we'll trace that to create uh, some vector art of that object. So I'm going to do a more uh, complex object. I'm going to do this picture that I found on Pixabay. Um, if we just go to pixabay.com, I can show you how I found this. Pixabay is a great site for finding free photos that you can use for both sometimes commercial and uh, obviously personal purposes. We'll just type in person and we can scroll down here and I've chose this picture of this guy falling. So this is uh, shared with us by the user Pixels and is under Creative Commons Zero License, free for commercial use, no attribution required. So we'll go ahead and download this. I already have it downloaded. Go ahead and download the 1920 by 1260. Click download here and then it'll appear in your downloads folder. So it's this picture here called Action. It's just a guy kind of falling. And what we're going to do, I want to bring this in, so I'll go back to my downloads, and I want to actually drag this into Inkscape, so we'll left click and drag it into Inkscape. We'll leave all these settings the same. This just says we're going to embed the image so it's part of our project file rather than linking it externally. If we link it and then we go back and delete that file out of our downloads, then it won't show up here in, in uh, Inkscape, which is probably fine since we're just tracing it anyway, but I'll just leave it here. Uh, so we'll embed, and then we'll leave everything else the same. So now we have this picture, and actually, there's a, I think there might be a faster way to do what I'm about to show you. I know there is, actually, but I'm just going to show you for using the, the uh, Bezier tool. It's a really good practice for learning how that tool works. So I wanted to scale this up, but I forgot to do one thing. Right now, it's, it'll skew it if I scale it unless I'm really, really accurate, so I'll hit Control-Z. Or I could hold the Control key while I scale, and then it stays uniform. But what I'd like to do is click this, this uh, lock at the top. And what it does, if you hover over it, it says it makes it so height and width uh, scale the same, whether you're holding the control key or not. And it just helps when you're working with photos and when you're working with text. I always like to have that checked. That way you don't accidentally skew something without realizing it. Okay, so we have this picture. And then we're just going to go to our Bezier tool. Make sure, um, if you were playing with this, playing along with the last videos, you might have this on ellipse or something. Make sure your shape is to none and make sure your mode is set to regular. And then we're just going to hit the plus key. I'll use my control wheel to kind of pan around. Hit the plus key, and we're just going to start right at the tip of this boot. And what we're doing is I want to create an outline. So we're going to draw just the outline. And I'm not going to, you could come down here and click and hold, and then create like that nice rounded toe. And maybe that'd be an okay thing. And so then this one comes here, and we can round that in a little bit. I'm not going to do too much of that. I'm just going to be clicking and create kind of a little bit more jagged, but we're so zoomed in, it's not you're not really going to notice. And I'll pause the video here in a second and speed up so we don't have to watch this whole process. But essentially, I'm just left clicking, creating some nodes every time that there's enough contour in this image. And we're going to create a nice outline, like a black shadow outline of this, like a silhouette of a person falling. And we could use it in like a logo, or we could use this silhouette or, I don't know, some print art or different kinds of things that we want to do. So I'll pause now, but um, just kind of follow along and do the same thing. I'll pause the video and speed it up, and I'll get back with you when I'm completed with this silhouette shape. Okay, I'm just about completing the last part of the heel of the shoe here. And don't worry if you mess up. I'm going to mess up intentionally right here. Like if you accidentally click in there or like out here, don't worry about it because we can fix that afterwards. I'm just going to complete my shape and click my very first point that I started with. And then we have this nice outline. And so your stroke might not be that large, but if we zoom out here, we can see it's, uh, it's created an outline stroke of this uh, whole person here. So right now our fill is transparent and our stroke is completely black. But if we hit black, we can turn our fill to black and we can come down to our stroke. We can hold down shift and hit none, uh, go to the transparent. So now we have no stroke and we have just a black fill. And that's see that creates kind of a cool, we have a nice silhouette. And then we can go in and fix any parts we messed up on by just going to the node edit tool 
zoom in and we can replace these nodes about where they should be. We can hit the delete key and delete a node if we think we have too many there. We can grab some of these handles if there's a rounded part like we did here. And we can adjust the way that this boot fits a little bit. We want to make it a little more big in the toe. And we can actually make it bigger than it really is if we want to. We can. We don't have to follow the outline exactly. So we can check through and see. But you know, I went, th I went through pretty jagged. This is like part of the shirt that I brought in. It's not really a mistake, but we can bring it in if we want to. If we don't like the way that looks, we can kind of bring that in a little bit. Well, I don't like the way that looks at all. <laughs> anyway, well, then we zoom out. And so what we can do is we can grab this now and we can move it around. So now we have this actual shape. And then we can take left click and we can delete our original, hit the delete key. And then we're left with just this silhouette. And we can change the color of it, any color we want. We can have it be, we can give it a separate stroke. If we hold down the shift key, we can give it a, like a blue stroke and have it be yellow. I'll hit control Z because I don't really like that blue stroke. Um, but we can make this be blue. And then we can, uh, yeah, we can do anything that we could do with any other um, path. So we can resize it, we can click again, we can rotate it if we want to have it be a little bit different. So it's just a really cool thing. We can apply a gradient, come to the gradient tool here, and we can just draw in a gradient. Maybe we can we want it to be kind of like that, so it like goes fades into alpha. And then we can put some text on here, and we can grab like a, you know, a different color background or something, and very quickly we can create a nice, cool little effect. And the best part is, it's all vector image. So I'll hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. When I have a source like this, sometimes I want to duplicate it. So I'll hit Control D, and I'll keep my original here. And that way, if I make any changes to this one, and ever I want to get back, I can just grab my original. Um, one change you, you could make, for example, we can go to Path and go to Simplify. And I'll just reduce the amount of nodes we have and kind of smooth things out. That doesn't look super great now. See, there's not as much detail in the head anymore. So this one still, I think, looks more realistic. So I'll delete this one. But we can hit Control D on our keyboard again and get another version here. And actually, it's a lot of times I'll do that. So if we take this, I'm getting kind of carried away now. But if we go Control D and then make this one black and push the down arrow key a couple times and the over arrow key, now we have like an outline. See that blue outline behind? And then we can send this black one to the very back. And then we kind of have a blue with a black outline is kind of cool. Or sometimes if I'll draw like a nice background like this, and I'll select the black if I can. I'll hit, uh, what is it, Alt? Alt, click, because I'm clicking back now because this gray was on top of it. Uh, and we can turn that to white. Oh, we can't see it. Control Z, Control Z. Let's take our shift. Let's take this and sync it all the way back to the back. And then let's grab just this black one and let's make it white. And then I'll go to uh, object. We'll go to, or I'll go to path. No, go to object. Yeah, fill and stroke properties. And then go make uh, bring up the blur. So we have like a blurred out version of it in the back. And we'll make this like full black. Turn the opacity all the way up to black. So yeah, then we have, that's pretty cool, right? So we have like kind of a cool thing. Oh, I'm trying to zoom in here. Yeah, make this a little bit darker or a darker blue. So that's some pretty cool things that you can do with the uh, with the Bezier tool. You can trace any object, take a picture of it, bring it in uh, here, or find a picture online. You can trace it, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it, like this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, this kind of kind of spurred on some inspiration. You can see maybe of some different uh, things you can do with this. We'll use this a little bit later on too in other videos. But that's an example of using the Bezier tool to trace objects in a real image. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.